all of you please participate right now oh. you are trying to actually you know gain a, a higher level of uh, insight about every tool not just the outline knowledge outline knowledge is not going to differentiate you as a black belt so Thank tell me yes rajesh come again the control chart is like uh, to understand the controllable point which you are fixing it as like min and median no no controllable points i don't get you what is the ultimate purpose of a control chart whether the process is under control or not whether the process is under statistical control or not whether the process is stable or not all of you are with me the purpose of the control chart is to understand whether the process is stable or not all of you now tell me is that a stable means process is good yes sir let us say no a person attends all the classes day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 day 6 in all the classes he attends he you know in all the classes he is consistent but later i realize he is consistently you know slept in all the classes day number 1 also he slept and that happened in day number 6 also he is consistent he is stable in coming to the class and also he is in performance is also consistent every single time he is sleeping Does it means he is performing good? Yes. No, his performance is not good, but he is stable. Like, mm. so stable need not necessarily be you no know, good. Huh. Stable means yes, he is consistent. But is he consistently good or consistently bad? That is you no know, called capability. Consistently good means you are capable. consistently bad means you are not capable control chart doesn't talk about the capability because to understand the capability you require specification limits am i right if all you produce are inside the specification limit then all are good <coughs> am i correct or not in control chart control chart monitors your you know products with respect to the control limit control limit is something we calculate using the data collected from the process that has nothing to do with specification limit all of you are with me so far yeah the control it. chart can only let us know whether our process is stable or not stable in the sense all the points are inside the control limit if all the points are inside the control limit my process is stable my process is in statistical control my process is consistent so what is the condition to conclude that my process is under statistical control what is the condition we need to check people are taking a lot of time to respond and this is killing our time what is the way to check whether the process is under statistical control or not we have to have a control measures like control chart to measure it now what what will you measure you just check whether all the points are inside control limit or not yes if all the And points are inside control limit what is your conclusion this in within the control limit process is under control yes but not necessarily be good isn't it not necessarily be bad yes it, that we need to check by you know by uh, bringing the specification limit right now a control chart will only have the control limit and now in control chart there are a control chart actually monitors variation control chart actually monitor variation there are two types of variation one is common cost variation another one is called special cost variation common cost variation another one is special cost variation special cost variation means the variation is too large the variation is too big to the extent that 
the point can go beyond control limit. What is control limit? A point at a distance of three sigma units away from the center line. The point at a distance of three sigma units away from the center line. So, with all these things, we are going to dive deeper into control chart. So, control chart only monitors whether the process is under control or not. It figure out whether special cause is present or not. If there is a special cause, that will appear as a point beyond the control limit. The special cause is there, that will appear as a point beyond the control limit. If, if special cause is there, that will appear as a pattern. Do you all understand what is a pattern? The points will follow some specific line. pattern. Can be a straight line. Some, some kind of profile you will be able to see. What is preferred? A complete randomness is preferred. What is preferred? A complete, complete randomness is preferred. So please understand as a black belt, all of you first to check whether the points are inside the control limit. If the points are inside the control limit, then also you need to check one more thing. You know what is that? Whether there is any pattern. Whether there is any pattern. If a pattern exists, your process is still not under control. So there are two conditions to check the statistical control. What is the first condition? All the points should be within the, limit. within the control limit. Inside the control limit. Second condition, which only the, as a black belt you will be able to figure out. There should not be any pattern. Pattern. What is required for you to conclude that, you know, <coughs> conclude about the statistical control? Randomness. If there is complete randomness, whatever variation we see, we can consider that as a variation due to common cause. If there is a pattern, we will consider that as a special cause. So, first condition, check whether all the points have come inside the control limit or not. That means that by first condition, we are checking whether all the students are inside the classroom or not. I, simply, I sincerely believe Rajesh is in, listening to me. Right? I sincerely believe Rajesh is inside my class. Similarly, Sagar, similarly, Nurul, similarly, Sundar, and similarly, you know, Anand and others. Everyone is inside my class. But how, do you think all of them are paying attention to me? Do you think all are paying attention to me? If be. I need to know that, I need to, you know, make them switch on the camera. Then only, you know, I need an additional control mechanism. So, if, even if all the students are inside your classroom, still they can comfortably sleep, isn't it? Whether yeah. they are sleeping or listening. I am just checking with the help of the randomness and the pattern. If there is a complete randomness, all of them are listening to me. They are taking down notes. This is quite common in a classroom. But someone sleeping in a classroom, this is uncommon. That will appear in the form of a pattern. Every single time I ask a question, he will not answer. Every single time I conduct a test, he will score low marks. So there will be a pattern, right? So if you could notice a pattern, even if the points are inside the control limit, this can be due to a special cause. All of you understand how to, how to identify the special cause? One way, easy way, which everybody knows is point appearing outside the control limit. Another next level of uh, special cause identification is the pattern. pattern of the points inside the control limit. There shouldn't be pattern, there shouldn't be point beyond the control limit. So with that note, let me again take you through the slides. Let me show you, share the screen. So all of you have already studied a control chart, right? Using Minitab. Now we are going to dig it deeper. So this is how a control chart can be plotted. There are certain steps you need to follow. And if you master one control chart, 
the principles and theory will be same. You can plot any control chart. At least the seven types of control charts, all of you should know and then you know should comfortably plot. First step, data collection plan or the sampling plan. Second step, collect the data. Always my suggestion is collect the data in subgroup. Collect the data in subgroup. All of you know what is a subgroup? Whenever you take a sample, take a handful of samples. Whenever you take a sample, take multiple samples. So if you take multiple samples at a time, then the collection of multiple samples is called a subgroup. All of you, do you understand subgroup? Yes. So a subgroup means there are multiple samples inside. But we fix a subgroup size generally. Subgroup size can be 3, subgroup size can be 5, subgroup size can be 10. Suppose if you have the habit of collecting 3 samples every single time you go for inspection, which means you are collecting samples with a subgroup size of 3. Because every single time, how many samples you take? 3. If you take 5 samples, then subgroup size is 5. Now compute X bar, compute R. And when to go for X bar R chart, first of all, your data must be continuous. When to go for X bar R chart, your data must be continuous. All of you know the definition of continuous data, right? Measurable. We'll have decimals. We'll have an appropriate unit of measurement. Then only know the data is called continuous data. And then subgroup size should be 8 or below. Subgroup size is 8 or below. Then you should go for X bar R chart. Calculate X bar, which is subgroup average. Calculate R, which is subgroup range. Can one of you define what is subgroup average? If your subgroup size is 5, how will you calculate subgroup average? Add all the 5. Divide by 5. Add all the 5. All the 5. Divide by 5. That's how you calculate subgroup average. Now, one of you tell me, how will you calculate subgroup range? The maximum of the phi minus minimum of the phi. There is a reason why we look at subgroup average. There is, there is a reason why we look at subgroup range. If subgroup range is under control, the variation within the batch is under control. If subgroup range is under control, the variation within the batch is under control. This is called within variation. If the subgroup uh, average is under control, the variation between the batches is under control. You have attended the training on day number one, day number two, day number three, day number four, day number five, and you are going to attend one more day, day number six. Do you, do, you, do you think your participation is important in all the six days? Am I right? Yes or no? All the six days, you must participate well. How you participated on day one? How you participate on day two? Do you want to see a difference there? Let's say one particular day, you did not participate at all. You slept. Now, this particular day performance, will be completely different from the other days. Am I right? Say yes, yeah, if you understood, if you understand. Yes, yes. This is what we are monitoring with the help of the subgroup average. Are you performing on all the days or not? I expect your performance to be same every single day. How you energetically participated on day one? You should participate with the same level of energy on day six. How a trainer is teaching on day one with the same amount of energy, he should teach on day six. Then only the output will be good. Am I right or not? Yes. Yes. That is why we are looking at subgroup average. But on every on any particular day, there are different sessions. Morning 9.30 to 11, there is a session. 11.15 to 1 o'clock, there is a session. Then there is an after lunch session, 2 to 3.30. Then again, 3.45 to 5. 
Now, how many sessions in every single day? Four sessions, isn't it? Two sessions in the morning, two in the afternoon. Do you want all these four sessions also to also to go effectively, or are you okay if the session is you no know, bad in the afternoon? What is your expectation? Do you expect great learning in the morning as well as in the afternoon? No. Or do you expect a great learning before tea and after tea? No. Come on, I need an yes or no here. No. No. Which means you are okay to have ineffective sessions in the afternoon. Is it so? No, no. It is not that no, right? So we want yeah. the sessions to be effective in all the four sessions. How the very first session went in the morning, same way the second session could go, should go, same way the third session, same way the fourth session. This is called within day variation. First, earlier we talked about the variation between the days. How many days? Six days. Now, within every single day, how many batch? How many? How many sessions we have? Four sessions. Four days. Six days and four sessions a day. We want all the six days to be effective, and we want all the four sessions to be effective. Do you understand? Yes. And if you want all the six days to be effective, you need to monitor X bar, subgroup average. If you want every session or every single day to be effective, then you should monitor subgroup range, four sessions every day. How the session went on on day number one, first session, all of you are giving a score of 10 out of 10. Second session, again, you are giving a 10 out of 10. Third session, you are giving a 10 out of 10. Fourth session, you are giving a 10 out of 10. Is there a variation in the data? No variation. Subgroup range is zero. If subgroup range is small, our sessions are very effective. All of you, do you understand? Yes, sir. Day one, you have given 10 marks, all 10 marks. What is your subgroup average now? 10, 10, 10, 10. What is the average of four tens? What is the average of ten? Four? Ten. 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 Obviously, day, ten. Day number two, classes are happening. Day number two, classes are happening. And every single day, we are taking your feedback. In the morning, you are giving eight. After tea, also, you are giving eight. In the afternoon session, you are giving eight. Again, fourth session, you are giving eight. Now, is there a variation in your data? All are eight. No. Subgroup range is still zero. That means how the energy level in the morning and the energy level in the evening are same. But what is the average now, subgroup average? Nine. If it is eight, all four eight, it will be eight. That means the day one program was fabulous because the average itself, how much? Ten. Day two, what is the average? Eight. Can you see a difference in the subgroup average? No. Day one average is 10, day two average is 8, which means yeah. day two, somehow the training has gone down. More, uh, we will figure out the reason. Do you understand? The variation yeah. between the group is a problem. And if there is a variation within the group, that is also a problem. Let us say first session, we, we ask the feedback. People are giving, you know, 8 marks. Second session, people are giving 7 marks. Third session, people are giving five marks. Fourth session, people are giving four marks. Now, what do you understand? Can one of you tell me? The fourth session is a very least session. Mm, as the time passes, participants get tired. Trainer also get tired. I could see that happening in reflecting in my data also. Which is, which is capturing that information. Subgroup range, am I right? The difference yeah. between 4 and 9 is very high. So I understand the sessions are ineffective within a particular day. Within a particular day, all the sessions should be effective. And that effectiveness should be maintained throughout the training duration. No. You need to monitor the range also. You need to monitor the X-bar also. The range is called within variation. X-bar is called? The variation in X-bar is called? 
between variation within variation should be under control between variation should also be under control if between variation is not under control then day one learnings are great but day two learnings are bad day one production quality is good day two production quality is bad are you okay with this kind of scenario creating this kind of scenario no every single day quality should be you know acceptable effective so process subgroup average should also be under control and subgroup range should also be under control because in a day we have four session in your company in a day you have three shift every single shift has eight hours this eight hours production should also reflect consistency that is what you are trying to monitor through the range shift to shift variation you are trying to monitor under x bar chart hope everyone understand my language yeah yeah so for the x bar chart you require x double bar for r bar for range chart you require r bar x double bar is average of the averages or average of the subgroup averages r bar is average of the subgroup ranges now compute the control limit what all of us know about control limit all of us know that control limits are three sigma units away from the center line am i correct hmm but your data you have only a small amount of data with the small amount of data straight away if you calculate standard deviation it will be a poor estimate how can i overcome hmm. i can overcome using the statistical formulas that are created already these are the statistical formula see here upper control limit for range chart upper lower control limit for the range chart upper control limit for the uh, average chart lower control limit for the average chart can you see some constants here d4 d3 a2 all of you can you notice some constants here yes these are called statistical constants for control charts these constants depends on the subgroup size these constants depends on the subgroup size right more the size better will be the estimate but even if you take a lesser size lesser subgroup size these constants will help you to arrive on an optimal standard deviation don't calculate the standard deviation directly calculate the standard deviation using the statistical constant look at the formula here d3 r bar d4 r bar x double bar plus r minus a2 r bar right so now now our subgroup size of find i picked up the statistical constant a2 is 0.577 d3 is 0 d4 is 2.14 now with all these values as well as the data i can draw the control chart i can draw the center line i can draw the upper control limit i can draw the lower control limit i can also plot the points and and you know interpret the graph and now see here the company is producing in four shift shift number 1 2 3 and 4 every single shift you take four samples what is your subgroup size now every single shift you take five samples what is your subgroup size five subgroup size is five now for the first subgroup you calculate subgroup average add all the five divide by five you get the subgroup average how to calculate the subgroup range maximum of the five which is the maximum of the five what is the maximum of the 601.6 beautiful 601.6 the minimum 598 beautiful now the difference between the maximum and minimum 3.6 you have a subgroup average you have a subgroup range how many subgroup you have totally here in your data five first subgroup five. how many 4 25 every day four for five days 4 into 5 20 subgroup. 20 subgroup so there will be 20 subgroup averages there will be 20 subgroup ranges i will share this data and i expect all of you to do it manually and plot the control chart also manually you get to know everything about the control chart now 20 averages are here can you calculate average of the averages possible average of the 20 averages obviously oh, no why no you add all the total averages 
divide by 20, you get x double bar. All of you understand how to get x double bar? Yes, sir. Yeah. 20 averages, you, are, you added and divided by 20. Similarly, there are 20 ranges. Find out the average of the ranges. Average of the ranges is called R bar. Now, R bar is available, which is going to be the center line in your R chart. X double bar is available, which is going to be the center line in your X bar chart. So, I take a graph sheet. First, I need to plot the R chart. There is a reason for it. First, I need to plot an R chart. There is a reason. So, I am plotting it. The center line for the R chart. What, is the, what should be the center line? R bar. R bar is how much? 2.72. Can you see here? 2.72. I am drawing a line. Now, upper control limit. What is the formula? D4 into R bar. D4 is 2.114. Hope all of you remember. We picked up from the control, control chart constant. So, now upper control limit is 5.75. Draw a line. Lower control limit. D3 is 0. So, lower control limit will be 0. So, 0. All of you, can you see center line, upper control limit and lower control limit? Yes, sir. Now, I need to plot the ranges now. How many ranges I have? 20 ranges. I am trying to monitor whether any particular day, is there any abnormal variation? Is there a trainers have not done their job? Is there a participants have not done their job? I will come to know by monitoring the subgroup range, which is called within variation, which is called within variation. First range, center line, upper control limit, lower control limit. This is the first range. Are you happy with the range here? One of you, please confirm. Are you happy with the range? Yes, sir. Day number one, there is less variation. Day number two, less variation. Day number three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Almost all the day, the variation is under control. That means the consistency, the way that the sessions are conducted, on the first day as well as the last day or same, right? The variation within the subgroup on your first shift as well as the 20th shift, same. Are they good? Are they all of them good? You need to go to the next graph, which is, and this is how you can actually visualize the graph. Connect the points in the same sequence using a straight line. Now the R chart is found to be under control. R chart under control means the within batch variation is under control. Range is under control. Range under control means within batch variation is under control. Now, now I go to the X bar chart, center line, X double bar, upper control limit, which is X double bar plus A2 into R bar, where A2 is 0.577. And lower control limit, X double bar minus A2 into R bar. I have the values. I have marked the points. Now I will monitor the subgroup average under this control chart. First subgroup average, I'm happy. Second, third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is falling outside. And I'm proceeding with all the points. I'm also visualizing the graph. Now tell me, is your process under control? No. Why it is not under control? South of outside the, the limit. One particular shift, only one point has fallen below lower control limit. Do you think it is it is critical? Do you think you need to take some action now? Or can you ignore it? Can you ignore or not ignore? Not ignore. We need to take action. Yeah. Why? Why it is? Why we should take action? Why should I take action? If I don't take any action, what will happen? This particular subgroup was taken on, let us say, uh, eighth shift, right? Eighth shift or otherwise, fourth shift on day number two. Am I correct? All of you follow me? Please confirm, all of you. This particular subgroup has been taken on day number two. Shift number four. Am I right? Okay. Yes. Sir. If yes. I don't consider this as critical, simply supply all the units to my client. I only studied the subgroup. My subgroup is unacceptable. 
because it is falling below control limit. But I simply ignore. And all the products I produced on that particular ship, I am sending the entire lot to my client. You know what my client will do? My client will also check my products. Am I correct or not? Sir, yes, sir. My client will also check. He will take some sample. And now he will make a phone call. Hello, gentlemen. This lot, what you sent, is unacceptable according to our, our inspection plan. Our quality inspectors have checked. We cannot offload your you know, truck. Whatever the lot you have sent, please take it back. Now, the transportation expense is waste, isn't it? And all the yeah. unit you produced <coughs> is going to come back to your factory. And in, in that entire lot of unit, there will be some percentage of good products also. Am I correct or not? Yes. There will be some percentage of good product, but definitely a major percentage is bad. That is that your, your client has you know, found through his sampling plan. And he estimated that the particular lot of product sent by you is having too much defective and so it should not be sent to the market. So he is sending back. All of you understand the consequence of this particular one point going beyond control limit. The one point is not a single point. It, it is actually a representative of the entire lot. How many of you get the point? True, sir. Get it. Get it. Then how we should work in that situation? If a point is going beyond control limit, particularly the X-bar, first of all, we must stop producing further. <laughs> what we should do? First of all, we must stop producing further. If we stop producing further, we are, we are containing the problem. We are doing a containment, right? We are just stopping the production. We are not allowing the problem to proceed further. First action. Second option. Second action. You might have produced 1,000 units. What you need to do now is do conduct an 100% inspection of the 1,000 unit. All of you get my point? All of you, do you get my point? Yes, 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 conduct 100% inspection. Now, 700 units are found to be within the spec. The 700 units are now dispatched. 700 units are now dispatched. dispatched. The remaining 300 units are scrapped for rework. Rework or they are scrapped. Now, the 700 unit reaches the customer place. What your customer will do, your client will do? He will again inspect. Am I right? Yes. Now, will your lot pass, pass through? The inspection? Yes. This is how you should handle. Don't just think it is one point. One point represents one lot. All of you understand my point? One subgroup average represents one lot. All the units that you produced on a particular shift, particular day, particular shift. Both are important. Subgroup average is important. What is the previous one? Subgroup range. Huh. What is this range is telling you? The range is under control. All the all the unit, all the unit produced in that particular batch within that particular batch is under control. So we will we will better understand this with a simple example, right? So within batch is under control. Between batch variation is also under control. And now you look at both the graph together. This is range chart. This is X bar chart or the average chart. Only when the range chart is under control as a black belt, you should proceed and plot X bar chart. If the range chart is out of control, your X bar chart has no meaning. Because the formulas are interconnected. If there is an out of control happening here, same moment, stop plotting the point in the X bar chart. First, you should correct. Because if the within batch variation is not under control, there is point, there is no point of no comparing day one and day two. Day one morning is good, afternoon is bad. But day two, day two performance, I'm trying to compare with day one. I should not do that because within day one, I have a problem. 
So make you know, the, the sessions within the batch to be uniform. Then only you should compare the day one uh, effectiveness with the day two, right? So range chart should be under control. Then only you can interpret the X-bar chart. The range chart monitors the within batch variation. The X-bar chart monitors the between batch variation. The X-bar chart monitors within batch variation. Within batch variation means, let us say first batch. First batch, shift number one. <coughs> first batch, shift number one. How many unit you produced? Let us say 1,000 unit. Now the range is under control. That means all the 1,000 units have uniform characteristics. Am I correct with my statement? Yeah. This yes. is the meaning of range chart. If the range is under control, now X bar will have a better meaning. Now first shift, 1,000 unit, there is a subgroup average. Second shift, there is a subgroup average. First day subgroup average, second day subgroup average are more or less same. That means what? Day one product quality and day two product quality are almost same. Am I right now? Mm -hmm. The production goes on. For seven days, it is, it is going on smoothly. But eighth day, mm -hmm. the raw material is changed. Somehow, the raw material, a poor quality raw material, you know, uh, came into play. Now, that is the reason why the eighth day subgroup is going out. If the eighth day subgroup is going out, what does it mean? The quality of the products produced on eighth day is completely different from the previous seven days. Do you get, do you get my point? That is why the eighth day production deserves 100% inspection. If you ignore, then what will happen? The poor quality product will reach the market and then spoil your brand image. All of you, do you understand? Why we are monitoring two variations? One is within batch variation, another one is between batch variation. Clear, everyone? Yeah. Yes, sir. So our chart must be in control. Then only you should plot X bar chart. If our chart is not under control, first you correct why there is a variation within a particular day. Within a particular day, variation you should not allow. Because the settings and everything is same. Within a day, raw material will be same. Within a day, operator will be same. Within a day, the machine will be same. If still variation is coming, you must you know first set it right. And then only the same setting. Same setting should continue over, over, over days. So these are the formulas for the X-bar R chart. Consider using plotting the X-bar R chart when your subgroup size is less than 8. Data type is continuous. When subgroup size is more than 8, instead of going for X bar R chart, you can go for X bar S chart. You can go for X bar S chart. And then when the subgroup size is just 1, you can go for IMR chart. IMR means individual moving rates. Why I am going for IMR chart? Because I am only taking one sample at a time. I don't know the reason. The product is costlier. The test is destructive. I simply can't you know, do destruct all the parts. So my management wants me to go with the subgroup size of one. So now I will go for IMR chart. The different formulas, but then you are controlling. right? So that this is what all of you need to understand about the control chart. Whenever the data type is continuous and the subgroup size is eight or less, go for the X bar R chart. And control chart just detects whether process is under control or not. Control chart just detects whether the variation is due to special cause. Special cause means something unusual happened. Generally, raw material comes with a good quality. One particular day, the raw material came with a poor quality. And so, problems started happening. Generally, machines run with a particular, you no know, correct setting. One particular day, the settings were wrongly set. And now, the points are falling outside the control limit, right? So, control chart can give a warning signal about the special causes. It only detects Control chart will not solve the problem. Control chart will detect the problem. You have to solve the problem. X bar R chart me monitors the mean and the variation of a process. A point falling outside the control limit indicates the presence of a special cause. If a special cause is detected, the process must be stopped for detailed investigation. Do go for 100% inspection and then you know figure out the root cause. For subgroup size more than eight, go for X bar S chart. For subgroup size of one, go for the IMR chart. 
same manner like the x bar r chart you have x bar s chart similarly for attribute data attribute data means you don't have numerical value people are only know telling the number number of units rejected ship number 1 number of units rejected in ship number 2 so this is countable data discrete data when when you when your data type is discrete you have four types of chart p chart np chart c chart and u chart now you have an option whether you want to control the number of defects or you want to control the number of defectives if it is number of defects you want to bring it down use the c chart or the u chart if it is number of defectives defective means the item is rejected defect means your defect is found you can still rework but defective means the item is rejected because there is no scope for rework the welding is you know wrongly done you can't break it and you know uh, join it again that possibility is not there you just have to scrap it now it is defective if you want to control the defectives you can have you can go for p chart and np chart and now within the two p and np subgroup size is very important if the subgroup size is constant go for np chart if the subgroup size is variable which means day number 1 your the number of samples you have taken is 100 but day number 2 you have taken 50 sample for some reason if the subgroup size is variable then you should plot p chart if it is constant plot np chart this is for defectives formulas are here you can go through leisurely similarly for defect if the subgroup size is uh, fixed go for c chart if the subgroup size is variable go for u chart here are the formulas right so same manner how we actually discussed about the uh, what do you call the x bar r chart same manner you can plot p chart p one such one such example is here this is a call center where the number of incoming calls unanswered is monitored number of incoming calls unanswered is you know a defective a defective call because call is unanswered that's a defective and every single day different number of call comes so the subgroup size is variable so you can plot it you can monitor it under p chart similarly in certain cases and certain cases you can go for p chart certain cases you can go for np chart i go for np chart because my subgroup size is constant so my control limit will also be constant stay at the same point but when subgroup size is varying you can see my control limit also varying right and you can you can actually uh, master all the charts and uh, u chart here is a case for a u chart where we are monitoring defects not the defectives and when the subgroup size is constant we go for c chart right so ultimately i we need to see all the points inside the control limit here only the so the point here is point here is you know you need to know which control chart will be more appropriate and then ultimately the variation should be under control if the variations are under control then the variation is due to common cause if it is out of control it can be due to special cause special cause means there will be a special reason if there is a special reason and you don't take any action then the special reason will will become very very special and then that become a hot topic in your organization isn't it and which is not good so that's why people uh, plot control chart use control chart and monitor the variation both within batch as well as between batch hope the session you uh, know uh, brought some clarity of understanding about how to use the control chart so if there are any questions please feel free to open your questions i'll be happy to clarify so here the u bar uh, 